We're going to be talking about PHP 7CC and PHP compatibility. I added snuck that one in. A couple of static analysis tools. Who here is running 7.2 in production? I see a few hands, not too many. This, this tool is helpful for all the way up to 7.2. Both of these can help be helpful. So this will be very pertinent to everybody here, it sounds like, other than, other than Wim and one other person. So we're good. <laughs> Uh, the talks are, my slides are posted online. If you want to follow along, see the, the examples, anything like that, the, po the slides are posted on the joined in. Um, all the coding examples that I have are posted on GitHub. You can also go and pull that down and follow along and look at the code and see what's wrong with it and why it's not compatible. So f feel free to follow along. You have your laptops up, installing things. That's perfectly fine. I like that, like that uh, approach. As I mentioned, I run the Utah PHP user group. Uh, it's about 5,000 miles away. It's a long trek, but it's good to come here. Uh, I love flying drones. Uh, senior, senior software engineer working on a drug testing platform. I'm sorry if you've ever been fired for a positive drug test. Uh, really, it's in the United States mostly, so probably not someone here, but I have a master's degree and so on. Uh, I, I learned yesterday that the Utah PHP user group is older than any user group in the UK. It's, it was from 2003, so it's going to be by just a year. It's an early starting one. I did live up in Manchester for a couple of years. If you live, live in that area, come talk to me. I love talking about Manchester and the Lake District. Um, so it, I, it, it was a great time I had up there. Uh, it, was, it was a while ago, but I lived there for a couple of years. This is where I live. I love flying drones. It's a drone picture. Uh, some nice mountains and some snow. And yeah, I'm going to say it the western US, mountains, not mountains. Uh, and there's Open West. I flew my drone during lunch at Open West, took that picture. I was very happy with it. Um, Good Salt Lake Valley there. It's a fun polyglot conference in the summertime. If you want to learn how to pick locks, it's a good one. Uh, we're going to talk about um, these tools. Has, does anyone know what this is? Anyone know what this tool is? I see one hand go up. Any others? Anyone? Do you, uh, only one? I see a couple. Okay, I see another hand. Someone want to be brave and tell me what it is? Crimping. Yeah, a crimping tool for PEX piping. So if you've never used one of these, it's a, a tool. I, had to I learned how to use it not too long ago with some plumbing in my house, with a little leaking. It wasn't too bad, luckily. But you have a few parts to it. You have the main tool. You have these little rings that go into the tool. And you have this tool over here. It's a compatibility checker. It lets you know if what you're doing is right. It checks to make sure that you've got the crimp on right and that the plumbing's going to work. If you don't get it on right, you're going to have leaks. You're going to have bugs. You're going to have issues. Okay, so this is a practical, real-world example of where we have a compatibility checker. Something's used in plumbing to help prevent problems. We have the same thing for code. We have some tools that we can use to help prevent issues when we upgrade. So when you walk out of here, my hope is that you have a good understanding of how, of why to upgrade to PHP 7, some of the important things there. If you're here for Wim's talk yesterday, he, he went much more in depth than I'm going to go into. Um, and primarily, you're going to know how to use these tools that we're going to cover. You'll be able, you should be able to walk out of here knowing exactly how to use them and be able to run them against your projects. You can even run it against your project during this, this talk if you'd like to. That's perfectly fine. And again, the slides are posted. The code is posted if you want to follow along on Joinedin. The slides are posted on, through the Joinedin. Why are these tools important? Uh, the main project I worked on, that drug testing one I mentioned, uh, was a big project uh, that started in PHP 4. So it had some uh, very old styles of code. It was hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And because it was a legacy application, it had few unit tests, OK? Um, and upgrading it to 5 was a mess. Getting it to 7 was going to be even harder. Now that, now, that project has made a lot of progress. It's gotten a lot of unit tests added to it, behavioral tests added to it. It's gotten framework, as in framework on it. It's got all these different nice things, got, you know, Zen Expressive, all these nice things coming onto it. But we wanted to move it to PHP 7. And again, hundreds of thousands of lines of code. There's no way to look at all those lines of code and make sure it's going to work. And the unit test didn't have complete full code coverage. So our unit test didn't have complete coverage. 
Um, so there's a, there's a common struggle. Anyone in that kind of similar situation? It's very common, right? Um, and then upgrading to PHP 7 was a, was a, t was a task. Uh, as a developer, I, I had my project manager try to upgrade and it didn't kick, pick up enough traction. So then I tried to work with our customers, which happened to be a child company, but it was just kind of a funny organization. And that didn't work out very well. So I went to sysadmins, and the traction didn't pick up. They were busy with other sysadmin things. So finally, as a developer, that responsibility fell onto me. Uh, the, the process I took was uh, running these automated tests, or these automated code coverage, running unit tests, and making sure that the code is compatible uh, with PHP 7, and then we're able to move that along. And once I took ownership of that, it moved up very fast. Within a couple months, we were on PHP 7.1 in production. So as, as developers, that's something you can take on, uh, the, the push to move to upgrade to PHP 7, because if you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for you, most likely. Here's a quick rundown, a quick overview of our agenda. Why upgrading, introduction to the tools, how to use the tools, we'll go into the options with them, some common issues, we're gonna do some live demos. I've got analysis, and we're gonna compare, compare some frameworks, uh, around the tools against some frameworks, we're gonna see how, they, how, they, uh, how they're doing right now. Um, and the CSV output of that, by the way, is on the GitHub repo, if you can wanna run with it, do whatever you want on there too. Um, and some considerations at the end. Uh, so why would we want to upgrade to PHP 7? Uh, and as we go through these different things, the focus right here really is identifying incompatibilities, things that are not gonna work. If you upgrade to PHP 7 right now in production, it's gonna break, right? We wanna watch for those, we wanna fix those. Um, and we're gonna talk about how these automated tools can help out. So PHP 7 is two to three times faster than PHP 5.6. <laughs> That's very good, right? Your server responses go f or become faster. It's 30 to 50% better memory consumption than 5.6, and more which leads to more requests per second. So our apps become faster. Um, our server load goes down. Okay, we start seeing some, some time saving, some money saving. Customers are happier. We're, we're getting things done. The, the server's responding faster. That's all good. Security, we have CSpring which is a, has random bytes and random ints, so we get some good cryptographically secure numbers. Libsodium it was, is, was introduced into PHP Core in 7.2. Um, it's the first, uh, it made PHP the first programming language to have a modern security suite built in to Core. So everyone that's laughing at PHP previously is no longer laughing anymore, so very good. It passed a full security audit and everything. It's a great, great project. Uh, if you're in looking into doing any encryption at all, look into Libsodium. Mcrypt was kicked out because it's based on stuff that has been updated for a dozen years. So it, it, it was deprecated in 7.1. It'll be gone probably 7.3 or 8. Anybody know exactly? Yeah. Um, password hash lost its salt option. Yes! <laughs> that was one of the worst things you could do. It's gone. It's good. It automatically does it now, and it's a deprecated, it's a, it's a gone function, deprecated. Argon2, anyone using Argon2 on their password hashing? It's not the default yet, but it's available in 7.2, and it's better than Blowfish, that's currently the default. So that's great, I, I'm not sure when it's slated to become de the default, but it's coming up. <coughs> uh, we have scalar type declarations. This is one of the best features of PHP 7. To seven PHP 7. So we have the ability to have scalar types, so we have int being passed in, it's forced as int, we have return types, we have something being specified on the return. That right there is bliss. It's so nice to have that. Uh, Levi Morrison did a lot of work on that one. Uh, he lives down the road from me, okay, like 20 minutes down the road from me. Uh, he did a lot of work on that, and he, he did a great job on that. It's a huge benefit for PHP to have that strict typed on the method returns. But this is one of the big catches. We have reserved class names. When we're trying to upgrade to PHP 7, if you have a class name int, or string, or float, or bool, or null, or true, or false. They're all incompatible. So the compatibility tools are gonna be able to pick up on these and catch those. As a 7.2, you can also add void to that list, an object um, as, as deprecated. Um, 
So this is a, some like we'll get into whether the tools catch that or not. Null call asking. I love the question question mark. Uh, it basically says this. If it's not if it's null, then do the second thing. That's what it basically does. Spaceship operator Davy Shafik. It's his favorite one. This is, the name's just great. Um, we have anonymous classes. We have generate return from expressions, exceptions and errors instead of hard failures. Many more great features. We won't cover all of them. This isn't a PHP 7 focused uh, as far as features, but just be aware of what's there and what could be incompatible with what you currently have. So I have a, the top three offenders list that we're going to go into. The number one offender that I've, I found when we were upgrading was classes that still had PHP 4 style constructors. Right? So instead of having underscore underscore construct, it had the class name. Is that uh, that's a let's see, PHP 4 style that's long gone. Uh, if you have those, they will not work in PHP 7 and must be fixed. Number two I found was HTTP raw post data. Hey, anybody have that lingering around? We had some really old SOAP services that apparently still were using it, and we had to go fix all those. <coughs> Luckily, it's an easy one fix. Uh, we won't be going into detail exactly how to fix these. PHP.net. If you look up those specific things, it lists out exactly what the recommended replacement is. Uh, so just be aware of that. We won't go into exactly how to fix it, but uh, we'll be able to identify them and know what needs to get fixed. Um, then you have the tools available to go and make those fixes. The third offender I found was static calls to non-static methods. Okay, so you know maybe a developer didn't notice or they wanted to take a shortcut. So instead of newing up an instance of it, they just did a colon colon method. This is public, right? You can do that. It works. Well, okay. It doesn't. That's not how it's intended to be used. <coughs> and in PHP 7, that's no longer available. It's deprecated. Um, so that was a big thing to, that I found and had to watch for. Other things that are removed to be aware of: call user method and call user method ray. We have ereg is gone. MySQL is replaced, so either MySQL I or PDO. Same with SQL, MS SQL, so use SQL Server or PDO. PDO is recommended. Um, set magic quotes, runtime, set socket bind blocking, and so on. So we have a whole bunch of things that have changed or been removed in PHP 7. So if we're using any of these things, we have a problem that's going to need to get fixed. We also have short uh, opening tags, ASP tags that are gone. And Xdebug no longer supports PHP 7, or sorry, PHP 5. So if you're using the Xdebug, um, you upgrade to 7, you got to upgrade your Xdebug version as well. We talked about that yesterday, about Xdebug. Uh, and most libraries are focused on PHP 7, I found, especially on uh, if you use Composer to install packages and libraries. A lot of them are starting to lose support for PHP 5 since it's no longer uh, actively supported. It's in the security patches only. So. This, these are what reasons why it's important to get this upgrade done. So, PHP 7 CC is the first tool that we'll, we'll talk about. And we're going to go to a live demo. So, PHP 7 CC is a uh, command you can run, it's uh, available with the uh, composer. You run it against a uh, code base. And it gives you some output. So in this case, we see array order. And it gave us a warning because it's uh, the, the possible array element creation during by reference assignment. Okay? We have bitwise shift going on. Uh, bitwise shift by negative number. That's going to fail. So it tells us exactly what's going to happen. It gives us the line number. It tells us what happened. Uh, here's constructor, right? So we have a constructor.php, and uh, of course it's got PHP 4 style uh, naming on the uh, constructor. And it tells you that it's now deprecated. We have you know, date formatting, divide by zero. It, it's it's going to catch a lot of these things. And these scripts are, were intended to be uh, backwards incompatible things that it's running against. So there's going to be a whole bunch of errors in here, and that's expected. Ereg removed, right? So we see. It's removed function, ereg replace, ereg. Um, anyway, so you can see it, it gives you a nice output. It tells you the line numbers. It tells you what's 
what's, what happened. What, it gives you an error or a warning. There's also an info. Um, like here's MySQL. It's trying to do MySQL connect. Of course, it's going to error because MySQL's gone. So it tells you exactly what happened, what line it was. <coughs> and so on, down the list, you can see split, right, removed. Um, at the end, it tells you how many files it checked. Uh, as a note, PHP 7CC gets a few fewer f files than PHP compatibility because PHP 7CC defaults to only PHP files. Um, and it tells you the amount of time it took. And we'll get into the analysis at the end too, or near the end on, on, on that. Switch back over. Okay. So now we've seen it, I'd like to start with the, kind of the live demo to get an idea of what it looks like and get a feel for it before we dive into it. Um, I don't know the, div the author's name of it. Anyone know the author's name? I have the uh, GitHub name, but I don't have the uh, person who actually did it. So. Um, it's a standalone library available through Composer. Static of code analysis tool like we've talked about. Um, so it's available just to, to run by itself. It's standalone. We get to PHP compatibility. It's a, a sniff for code sniffer. So that's a little difference there. <coughs> it was focused primarily for upgrading to PHP 7. So it doesn't catch a lot of the PHP 7.1 and 7.2 things. But it catches a lot of the things going from PHP 5.3 to 5.6 all the way up to PHP 7. And again, it doesn't automatically fix things for you. That'd be so nice if it did. <laughs> but that'd be really, really hard to make it do that. <coughs> um, and it's really not too bad as a developer to go fix them. Like you have identified the specific lines. You have a you know, PHP.NET reference to look that up, know what had to happen, and know what needs to, to occur to make that start working. Um, to install it, Composer require install a slash php 7 cc. Uh, dev is the default now, but you can do dash dash dev. And then to run it, dot slash vendor slash bin slash php 7 cc, and then the path or the specific file. <coughs> if you add it to your path using those commands right there, then you can just do php 7 cc and then whatever target you have. And that will give you that nice output that I showed you earlier. And so if you're following along in your laptops, feel free to pull it down and run it. <coughs> um, again, you can go sp target specific paths or you can target a specific file. Using it. So we're going to go over the options as well because that helps with display and determining what needs to happen. So the dash H or dash dash H is pretty standard. Gives you the help information. And it looks like that. Um, we'll go through each of these real quick uh, so you're familiar with those. So dash E is extensions. As I mentioned, the default extension for PHP 7 CC is PHP. But maybe you have other files that have PHP code in them that are not PHP files. Then you can tar target those files specifically. So you change, change the extension to whatever that, you know, maybe PHP S and PHP files would be an example. It's comma separated available. You have accept, so or dash X, uh, to exclude specific files or specific directories. This is especially helpful for running it against vendor. So if you're using Composer again, uh, then you have vendor, and you can skip that uh, directory. That's because you're not going to want to run um, PHP 7 CC against your vendor directory, generally speaking, um, because it's uh, you're targeting your files, right? So uh, you, you'll use Composer to upgrade the packages rather than running compatibility checkers against vendor code. You have the level. So the default is the info and everything above that. So info, warning, message, and error. Or warning, the error. Um, but you can change that if you want. If you want to see the infos and don't want to see the warnings, you just want the uh, maybe just the errors. Um, generally, you're going to want to look at least through all of them at least once. Just again, to make sure it's going to be uh, compatible. Dash R is very helpful. It gives you relative paths. It cleans up the output. Uh, when I showed you the demo that had dash R in it, um, so instead of having the full path to the file, it's going to have the relative path from where you're at the command line or terminal. Um, so much cleaner output, much easier to read. Um, not necessary, but helpful. 
integer size uh, used for bitwise sh shift checks. Um, you have dash o output format. This is really helpful if you if you want to if you have a lot of files and a lot of things you need to go change. Has the option for JSON format, so you can take that JSON, um, grab it in some PHP code, encode it, and do some things with it. For example, maybe you could have it create tickets automatically for all the changes, and you can go and uh, hit those. Maybe create user stories or defects against that, and go fix all those. We had an example that was might be going a bit overboard, but if you have a very large project with a lot of issues, that would be a good way to a good use of that. So it's nice to have the JSON format. You have a quiet mode, which runs without output. So if you have a very large project, perhaps that uh, that you don't want to have, it's, it's killing it basically. When the process is running, it'd be a, an option to, to quiet that down. Um, dash B gives you the version, so you know which version you're on. But Composer's going to tell you that too. Uh, in my case, is running it with 1.2.1. .1. ANSI forces ANSI output uh, for for pretty colors if you're in the terminal, or no ANSI if you want to turn it off. You have different verbose levels defaults to one. Um, so there's a quick introduction to the options with that tool. And we'll jump over to PHP compatibility. We'll, we'll go back to it and we'll do some comparisons, back and forth comparisons with comparing these two different tools. Um, so PHP compatibility is a, another tool. It's ran <coughs> and come back up here. So it gives you a different looking output. As it run along, runs along, if you have the progress on, it gives you a, it looks like we're running a bunch of unit tests. It looks like that similar output. <coughs> it gives E's for errors, W for warnings. You can kind of watch that, especially on a bigger project. Otherwise, it just sits there. You don't know what's going on. But this tells you exactly what's going on as it's running. It tells you the file. It was ran. It was checked. It gives you the number of errors, the line number. So we hear, see here this one's got the bis, uh, bitwise shift operators by negative numbers. So we saw that with the PHP 7 CC. Okay, so it did catch that same thing there. You know, it's going to give you multiple errors. You have to two, line two, line three. Give you, give you a similar description as PHP 7 CC. So we see it's telling you what happened and why. <coughs> um, and you can go through this. There's, there's the output can be very large if you have a very large project. You might want to, you know, pipe it out to a file or something. So big output. Uh, it tells you the the time it took and the memory used. Um, so you can use that if if and we'll go into the comparisons. We'll see which one's faster. Well, any guesses yet? Any, which one's faster? Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? Well, maybe. You think the second one? See, uh, uh, PHP compatibility I hear? We'll, we'll get in that. We'll see. We'll see. They have different strengths and weaknesses, so it's interesting to see which ones they pull out. We'll, we'll get into that. PHP compatibility, uh, primarily written by Wim, who's sitting right here in the front. So thank you for your, for your contribution to the, to the community with that one. Uh, it's a sniff for PHP code sniffer. So if you use code sniffer for sniffing code to check for coding standards is what it's typically used for. So if you're running PSR, um, back in the day it was pair coding standards, and you can run these different sniffs to make to ensure that code meets specific standards. You know, maybe it's tabs versus spaces, and the curly brace on the new line, and indentation, and all these different type of styles and uh, standards. So you can add different sniffs into it. So code sniffer, you can add different sniffs, you can customize sniffs, and these sniffs can all be configured to run, you know, together against code. <coughs> Often used as like pre-commit hooks, uh, so committing your code up, you just got to pass the sniffs before it can be uh, pushed up. For example, again, it's a static code analysis. It's not going to fix the code for you, um, and it's used for upgrading from going all the way back to PHP 5.1, all the way up to PHP 7.2. So it has a wider coverage than PHP 7 CC goes back uh, previously a couple of ver minor versions, and goes forward a couple minor versions ahead of PHP 7 CC, so a wider range. It also has the ability to specify where you're at and where you're going. 
uh, the simple install, compose require, um, PHP compatibility. Uh, you also have to have code sniffer installed for setup. Um, these, those three together will help get you there, um, help you be able to run it. If you only have one sniff, um, you can set it to have the install paths. You can copy paste that. Um, you can check which sniffs you have installed. It's PHP uh, CS for coding for code sniffer dash dash show config show and it'll show you your configuration. Um, and then you run it similar to PHP 7 CC. You know, if you don't have a new path, dash, dash, or dot slash or full stop slash vendor bin PHP CS. And then coding st or standard equals, and you tell it the coding standard. You can run, if you leave it off, it'll run all your sniffs if you specify it. If you don't, if you didn't specify it in the configuration, you have to specify it there. And the target. Um, if, the, if the bin is included in your path, then it's just PHP CS by itself. And if you don't, again, if you don't specify the standard, it's going to run all of them. So we're going to go over the help for the, this, this tool as well. Uh, we won't go over all of them, but we'll go over ones that are applicable to coding or to uh, upgrading to PHP 7. So you have N, which is your warning severity. Uh, you can turn off warnings, you see errors. Um, so it kind of gives you a, a, a check in there. You have W, uh, show errors and warnings, which is the default value. So you, don't have, you generally won't ever use that, but you can. You have local directory only, which doesn't go recursively. This one's very helpful if you want to check a specific directory, but maybe you don't want to run it against the entire project at that time, especially as if you have a large project and you want to just check one directory at a time or you have it broken apart, right? So maybe you're hitting your PHP memory, memory limit and it's crashing. Uh, you just want to go you know, one directory at a time, perhaps. Uh, this, this is a good option to use there. So just check it without going recursively. Uh, Dash S gives you the sniff codes. So if you look here, it says PHP compatibility, forbidden switch with multiple default blocks. Okay. So if you look at the file name is switch multiple defaults. Or, so you know that at that point that that's the sniff that picked it up. And you can go look at that sniff and compare it with what you have and understand why better. Um, so it's very helpful for understanding why something's not compatible. Gives you a little bit more information that you might want, might need. Interactive mode. Uh, for this one, I want to do a quick live demo because it's, uh, it's easier to show than to explain. It, it basically gives you the ability to interact with the, uh, with the process, with the progress. Um, so it gives you a uh, hit enter to recheck, S to skip, or Q to quit. So if you hit enter, it's going to recheck the exact same thing, and it's going to tell you it's not fixed, and it's going to ask you what to do next. So then you can switch over to your IDE. You can make the fix, hit enter again, and if it's fixed, it'll go on to the next one. So this one's really helpful if you're working through code. So you're just going to step through one by one, right? You're going to fix it, go to the next one, fix it, go to the next one. And then you don't have to fire up the tool every single time, so you just step through and fix them one by one. So very helpful tool. Uh, S to skip, it'll just go to the next one, right, until you fix that one, and then Q if you want to quit out. So that's interactive mode. Again, I, I like that mode. It's very helpful for working through a project and uh, fixing it fixing your, pro your code to make it compatible. Dash E is to explain the coding standard. Um, it, it tells you the number of sniffs, so it's got 67 sniffs. So you know it's going to fix about 67 different incompatibilities. Okay, you just give you an idea of what's going on. Um, it's got a generic sniff, it tells you. And it doesn't list all of them. There's 66 right there that it goes through and, and that ha it has, it's going to run against this. Um, where it's breaking it apart, it creates tokens and under figures out the code and then and runs those sniffs, it checks for patterns. Uh, dash P shows the progress. I mentioned that one earlier, where it gives you a, 
it's a little hard to see the green, but it gives you a PHP unit looking progress on there. It tells you the number of files, the percentage. It tells you when it's hit an error or warning or whatever other issue you have pop up. So it keeps you up to date on, on where you're at. Quiet mode, we saw that with PHP 7CC. Uh, disables the progress and verbose output. Um, if you have memory issues, that might be a helpful thing. Dash M um, stops the memory error messages from being recorded. Uh, Maybe if you're using a really large project and you, you just don't want them outputted. Um, but there, you gotta be careful with it too. Uh, it's gonna, it could trigger some different cascading issues. Uh, list files processed. There's dash V. Uh, this is very helpful just to, if you want to ensure what happened. It's gonna tell you the what's processing, the number of tokens. Uh, so the tokens basically is the, the, the PHP compiler is breaking apart the PHP code and has so it interprets it. So it's telling you 59 tokens and 11 lines and so on. It'll tell you the number of errors and warnings. I use this to grab the, uh, the analysis stuff at the end too, the comparison. Dash VV uh, prints the rule sets. So you can start going to the tokenizing and see what's happening. So we see a beginning of PHP tag. It's got a class, static calls, curly brace bracket, public. So it goes and breaks apart the PHP code to give you a better understanding of how that sniff is working exactly. Um, it's, it's helpful for debugging. It's helpful for understanding what, what exactly is going on. The dash VVV, so it's very, very verbose. Uh, it's a debugging mode. Gives you some more information. Uh, we probably won't need that <coughs> for what we're doing here. Dash I gives you the installed sniffs, so you know what's installed and what's going to be running. Dash D gives you the directives. Um, this is very helpful. Uh, you can add like memory limit, for example. So maybe you have a large code base again, um, and, but your memory limit's maybe like 128 or 256. But it's going to run, and it's maybe going to take you know 600 megabytes to run. Uh, you can do a dash D memory limit, increase it to 1024, run it again, it'll work. You won't hit that memory error. Um, that's one I had to use quite a bit, especially on large projects. There's other options available. We won't go into all of them. Well, those are the ones that are most applicable uh, to what we're trying to do here. It's common issues. As a developer, we want to have our error reporting cranked up. We want to see those deprecated flags. We want to see those warnings. We want to see those errors. If we don't have that on, uh, and we try to run the code, we're not going to know that it, you know, it's not really fixed. Uh, these static tool analysis, these static code analysis tools, do not pick up everything. You're still going to have issues. It's not perfect. Um, some of the patterns are too hard to recognize automatically. Um, by having our error reporting turned on, it helps us indicate. And if we're watching error logs too, of course, it helps indicate where the problems are and help track them down. Uh, unit tests. This is a, a common issue. The unit tests and functional tests uh, really help, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. Often with older uh, projects, uh, they're not going to have unit tests, right? And they, they probably don't have dependency injection and other techniques to help with, with testing. Um, so that's another item that's very helpful. Um, to make sure your application is going to run after upgrading is to have those automated tests to make to ensure the functionality and the, uh, the, the the code is working. You also pick up on those other areas that may not automatically be caught by the uh, compatibility checker tools. Uh, again, a common issue if you're trying to fix the vendor directory, uh, it's not the right approach. We want to use Composer to upgrade that, so we want to tell Composer, you know, upgrade these packages for PHP 7.1 or 7.2, whatever we're upgrading to, and uh, let, let Composer handle the dependencies and do the upgrades for you there, so you can just ignore the vendor directory, most, the vast majority of the time. Uh, you should just be ignoring that on your code sniffing, or code checking. PHP 7.cc does have an infinite loop error that I've run into a few times, um, and they don't appear to be fixing that anytime soon. So if you run into that, you start have to, having to do like accept, the, the, this is a skip basically. So you'll see where it's at and you kind of figure, oh, okay, it's in this directory, we're gonna skip that. And you have to run file, one file at a time and kind of narrow it down until you figure out which one exactly it's failing on. So that's kind of a heads up. There, that one does rear its head occasionally. Um, and just be aware of that backwards 
uh, compatible code. So for example, a framework might say, you know, if, if this is PHP 5.6, then do this. If it's PHP 7, do that. So you don't want to go changing those. Of course, those are going to be mostly in the vendor directory, but maybe if you run your code where it's doing that, I'll just keep that in mind that you, if you're upgrading to PHP 7, you can go to remove those backwards compatibilities. Uh, you're not going to need those anymore. But they may have been in there for a reason, right? So that the code could work on an older version of PHP, for example. So that's a common one that is seen. The analysis. So I, again, I posted this all online already on GitHub. It includes a, a spreadsheet. Um, I ran this uh, for, with PHP 5.6 going to PHP 7.2. Um, 49 files were examined for this. Um, to create these files, I went through all the compatibilities, the backwards incompatibilities, the deprecated things on PHP.net um, and tracked them down, made a file to re replicate that. So I had 49. Some of them have multiple issues with them. Uh, if you look through them all, I would not recommend using any of them in production. <laughs> They're all bad intentionally. Snapshot of what I found. Uh, PHP CS, uh, which is the uh, PHP compatibility through PHP Code Sniffer, had a total of 33, which is a sum of errors that were found in, the, in that small code set. It had four warnings uh, compared to PHP CC, which only found 30. I found six warnings, okay? So, a little difference there. They're fairly close, um, but there are some differences. Uh, PHP compatibility found a total of 23, uh, <coughs> 23 files that had problems in them, okay? So that's what the count refers to is the number of files that have problems. Uh, and three of them had warnings, whereas PHP 7CC found 27 and five, so a little different. Uh, the unique ones, so this is where there was a file that had like, for example, an error in it that none of the other three warnings errors showed up on the other columns. So PHP uh, compatibility had the most unique ones, or equal, they had four versus the errors versus four warnings of PHP 7CC. So they're not catching the same stuff, are they? There's a discrepancy there. They're different. And that's okay. The good thing is they're both open source. We can use them both. Here's a quick uh, little pie chart, because char pie charts are amazing, and they make cells and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, PHP 7 CC, again, this is just a, a, a pie chart. I thought it'd be great. Um, we kind of see that, they're, that the uh, errors are most common. The warnings are going to be smaller that they pick up on. The warnings are things that you may or may not need to fix. Um, most of the time you do have to fix them, but not always. The errors are things that are absolutely just going to break. Okay? So here's a, a, an overview of those files uh, when I ran that. So we have, and the names of the files reflect the problem with them. So we have extra parens, we have a for each with a pointer in it, func git arg. Um, so we see that uh, the the different checkers found different things, okay? And this is where the stats come from. Um, kind of interesting that uh, they, they pick up on the same things most of the time, but there are some differences. And I coded these to the best of my knowledge, so maybe it wasn't a perfect example, and maybe that's why they didn't get caught. Um, that could be, or it could be that the pattern is too hard to catch. Um, so that, that gives you an idea where we're at with uh, these ones. The next set, HTTP raw post data. They both found that one pretty easily. Um, int as a class name, they both found, for example. Invalid octal, they both found. Uh, JSON to JSOND was changed. I didn't catch that. Empty JSON string, for example. Um, mcrypt deprecated. Uh, was deprecated in PHP 7.1, so we, we would not expect C C PHP 7 CC to catch that. It would be an example of where PHP compatibility is going to be a major benefit to get, the, get you all the way up to 7.2. Um, MSSQL, MySQL, we both those picked those up and so on. It's kind of funny to read through it and look through it and see which one's picked up what. Little 
little competition between the two compatibility checkers. Um, here's the, the next set. We have static calls, right? So this is the one I mentioned. Neither of them found it. I was kind of surprised. But that's probably a hard one to uh, see Wim's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Why wouldn't it catch that? Yeah, it's a, it's a hard one. Um, you'd have to analyze what it's trying to call into. And so it may not even be the same file. It could be a completely different file it's trying to call into, and so you just don't know. Uh, which is, again, where the unit tests and stuff come in much more handy, handy even if it's a you know, Selenium or clicking on things test. Um, switch, multiple defaults were was caught. Yield with parentheses, I'm kind of surprised uh, that uh, PHP 7CC was the only one who picked that one up. Uh, PHP 7.1, so these are PHP 7.1 specific items, and these are PHP 7.2 specific items. Uh, so dynamic calls was picked up by PHP 7CC, which kind of blew my mind because it wasn't written for PHP 7.1. Uh, but we see that uh, PHP compatibility did pick up on more things, of course, than, than PHP 7CC did in the 7.1 and 7.2 realm, which is expected, and that's good. It tells us that we want to use more than one tool. Okay. One tool by itself will get us a long ways. But it's not. But if we can run multiples, it gets us. You know that it might get us 95% with the first tool, and then the next one's going to get us an extra, you know, few percent closer. <coughs> a few more. Um, they both caught the object. And again, that's a 7.2 PHP 7.2, but PHP 7CC kind of caught it, so it's kind of surprising one too. And there's where the uh, stats came from. Timing. So I ran this on a very large project. It had 2,364 PHP files. Okay, so very lar a large project, larger than most. Not huge. It is bigger, of course, but it's a good, good, data, good data set to run against. Uh, PHP 7CC took 276 seconds. Uh, and PHP compatibility took 271. So they came in pretty close. Um, PHP compatibility was just, just barely beat it out. Not by a ton. So they're about, they take about the same amount of time, is what I found. OK, anybody, anybody catch that? OK, which, which framework's going to win? Any guesses? So I did it against Zend, Slim, uh, Symfony, Laravel, WordPress. Any guesses which one was the fastest? Laravel? I'm hearing maybe Slim was the fastest. Okay. Which one do you think had the most problems? Hmm. <clears throat> and remember, though, it may not be that it's a bad framework or has problems. It could be that it has backwards compatibility built into it. So that's a you know a big caveat with that one. It may be in there intentionally, and that's okay. So Zen framework one with 330 backwards compatibility issues, but it ran into the infinite loop error, which PHP 7CC, so I could never finish it. Okay? And it had 2,300 files. Symphony, with uh, 3,700 files, only had 34 issues. That's impressive. That's pretty good. Okay? PHP 7CC, that, that, and that gives you a timing, too, of how long they took. So generally speaking, we found PHP 7CC was faster. On the big project I ran, it was slower. But on, 7 C, but on the frameworks, um, it, PHP 7CC was slightly faster. It's not a huge difference, though, just a little bit. To run this, basically what I did is I just used Composer to require those frameworks on a project by itself. And then I ran the tool against that directory that it sits in, the entire directory. So we see Slim, with only 46 files, of course, was the fastest. It had no PHP codes compatibility issues, and only one that PHP 7CC caught. It's pretty good. That one ran really fast and was quick. WordPress um, took the longest. Not too surprising. It's a very it's a, it has fewer files, but it must be bigger. Um, it had 302 compatibility issues. 177 PHP CC issues. But as I mentioned, these could be intentional. 
So we can't just judge a framework by its stats in this case. Because that, like I said, it often we'll see like, you know, if the PHP version is this, then do that. And so it'll, it'll still pick up on those, even though the code is specifically identifying you know, which version to do. So it may not necessarily reflect an issue. So that's, again, that's a big caveat with these, with these stats. Any surprises in there? Anybody surprised Anything like that? So kind of interesting to run it against the frameworks and, uh, and see where, where it's at. So what we're going to do next is I need one volunteer, a lucky volunteer, to tell me a package that they would like to run this against. We're going to do a live demo. Anyone? What's a package you'd like to run this against? Any packages you want to run this against? Behat? Okay. Okay, so now we have Behat. So we're going to run this. Let's install Behat. I have my debugging on, don't I? <laughs> no? Yes, I do. Okay, so now it's, we're using Composer, we're installing Behat. So I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to, uh, to run this. Um, so we installed, uh, oops. So we have Behat there, okay. So we're gonna pop back over here and we're just gonna change this. We're gonna run PHP 7CC. And it's gonna run it against uh, uh, let's see where I'm at. Vendor B hat. Okay. Let's so run PHP 7 CC against B hat. We'll see how it does. And then we'll run uh, PHP compatibility against it. So I want to do this because we want to. Well, see, this is this is something we can do. This is a uh, an easy. Uh, these are easy tools we can use to uh, run against and uh, see what's happening. So that's going to take a couple minutes here to run. Um, oh, I have a mesh over there. It found nothing. That's impressive. It found nothing. Uh, that's a B hat. Wow. That was a <laughs> that's a robust project. They are very they are on top of this apparently. Let's try it with uh, let's try it with this other one. Um, so we'll do the same. Okay, I might need another project to run this against if it's going to be that good. <laughs> um, we could run it against PHP unit. That might be a might trigger a few more. I don't know though. Only one. Okay, so no PHP code was found in this file. And short ta open tags are not allowed. Okay, so it only gave us one. Um, okay, so that was, that, that was pretty good. I think B hat, that's impressive. That's uh, amazing. Oh, we got interactive, don't we? That's what it was. Okay. We'll run it again. Take off interactive. Good call, Wim. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, that's, that's what I was expecting. All right, so 731 files. We see the progress running. That's pretty clean. So here, this is probably an ex example of a project. We could do this and say install an older version of it, and it would probably have a lot of problems. But in this case, it just has that one warning like, where it told us where it had it. Any other projects you want to try it on? Try Drupal, I heard. Let's see.
Anyone know, uh, let's see, anyone know exactly which one it is? What? No, Drupal S Drupal. Why did it follow up on a Drupal? That's weird. Um, okay, so we'll do, where are we at? Closer, install, or require Drupal slash Drupal. Okay, so we'll run it against Drupal. This will be the last one we'll do. And again, if you have your own project, uh, run it against your project right now. See what you, see what you find. Um, kind of interesting to see what we get here. So we're downloading in Drupal. Um, we'll run it against there and, uh, and see what it looks like. 